Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Welcome to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, be sharing the latest Bitcoin technical analysis. Also breaking news, Bitcoin now up 114% in the past 12 months. A reminder to hodl. Also, the 13 richest man, Michael Dell, just posted, enjoy Bitcoin. That's what's up. Also, as we know, some big news coming out of El Salvador. According to the Rumble CEO, Chris, he just tweeted, this is huge. President Bukele of El Salvador is changing the game and leading on free speech. And that was retweeting Max Kaiser's post. We got the green light. We're launching a new video, El Salvador TV channel on Rumble, uncensorable, the only uncensored state media in the world. Congratulations, Bukele, El Salvador, Kaiser, Rumble CEO. You guys are doing a big respect. We'll also be discussing the Bitcoin Bears base $40,000 prediction uh, on self-induced fear, according to Jan 3's Samson Mao, as well as Elon Musk's Doge government meme sends political speculation a soaring, as well as El Salvador marking three years of Bitcoin adoption with $31 million worth of profit. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin surge is so close. Crypto analyst Mikhail Van Day Pop says Bitcoin is prime for a massive rally. I'll be breaking down the timeline. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin smashing as high as 315000 per this cycle as per top analysts. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much motherfucking more. In today's show. Very important to smash the likes. Go ahead and subscribe. Then hit that sexy bell icon to turn on all notifications. That way you get notified each and every day when I go live. Uh, today is pod number 1753. I'm your host, JV, at September 7th, 2024. Happy Sat Stack and Saturday. Bitcoin's currently back above 54 Gs. We're back in the green after tapping a low of the high 52s uh, just yesterday, unfortunately. But nonetheless, we'll see how low this baby goes. And uh, let's kick it off with our market watches. We do each and every day, everything back in the green. We love to see. Uh, Bitcoin just above 54,600, according to Coin360. Ether is still back under 2,300. Uh, XRP in the green, Solana, most of the market recovering some after a pretty uh, depressing past few days in crypto. But anyways, good for the hodlers that are stacking the sats nonetheless. And check it out, coinmarketcap.com. The current crypto market cap in a whole is at $1.93 trillion dollars, the Bitcoin market cap, 1.073 trillion. So that market cap has been on the decline volume, roughly 56 billion in the past 24 hours. And the Bitcoin dominance is on the climb, I believe. Yep, I'm right. 55.7%. Ether dominance has been on a steady decline all the way down to 14.3%. How high do you think the Bitcoin dom will likely climb for this cycle? Holla at your boy. And checking out top 100, crypto gainers past 24 hours. We got sats up 10%. We got Stark up 10% and Sue up 10%, 10, 10, 10. And uh, below that, a lot of gainers today in the market, which we love to see because for the past week, it's just been like 90, 95% of the market in the red every day. And uh, checking out uh, Crypto Bubbles, is it still down? I don't know what's going on with their server. Up oh, there we go. It's back up. Um, on the daily, you can see a visual perspective, like 95% of the market in the green and pumping. And zooming out on the monthly, get a broader perspective. I'd flip it roughly 50-50 ballpark. Some in the green, some in the red. And checking out the Crypto Green Inferior Index. Uh, today, we're still in extreme fear. I think that's a good sign of a likely bounce. Yesterday, we hit a low of 22, which is the lowest has been in a minute. Uh, last week was a 29, and last month a 20 in extreme fear. So there you have it, yo. And checking out the time chain calendar. We're currently on Bitcoin block number 860,347. But who's counting? Time chain calendars counting. And uh, we have 189,653 blocks until the next halving scheduled to take place roughly April of 2028. And now you can literally get 1,837 Satoshis per dollar. So it's a great opportunity to become a Satoshi millionaire. If you're not already, a great time to be stacking the stats and take advantage of it. And again, the market cap is only $1.08 trillion, which is pretty mind boggling at the end of the day. But anyways, uh, let's dive into today's Bitcoin technical analysis, AA astrology for the broskies and check out some of the live charts and where the price action is likely to take us next. And welcome everyone just joining the live stream. Appreciate the support. Sub 50,000 Bitcoin correction remains in play as well as look to sell the bitty. Uh, here you're looking at 
Bitcoin's correction below 50 Gs, which is a major psychological mark, which could occur as soon as this weekend, threatening to create more downwards pressure in September, which is a historically bearish month. Uh, Bitcoin price could see more downside pressure this weekend as the whales look to lock in the profits. The savvy, one savvy address sold 100 biddies worth 5.3 million to lock in over 206,000 in profit. Following suit, a total of 402,000 BTC worth over 21 billion was bought by addresses that are likely looking to sell at break even, according to a September 7th post by on-chain intelligence firm, Look On Chain, uh, quoting them here. Uh, 836,000 addresses bought 402,800 Bitcoin valued at $21 billion at a price between 51.1 and 54.3. These addresses are likely to sell near the break even. Now the whales can significantly impact Bitcoin's price action due to the high amount of market moving capital. Traders often follow whale selling patterns for queues on a crypto short term price trajectory. Meanwhile, Bitcoin can see a correction below the 50,000 psychological mark, only 4,000 away. As soon as this weekend, according to Arthur Hayes just blazed, the former BitMEX CEO, quoting him here, Bitcoin is heavy. I'm gunning for sub 50 Gs this weekend. I took it cheeky short. Pray for my soul, for I am a degen. I love Arthur Hayes. He's hilarious. Meanwhile, the Bitcoin price lost its key 55,000 support, falling 1.4% to trade at 54.3, which is precisely where we're currently at at the time of the live ballpark. Uh, Bitcoin is down nearly 8% on the weekly chart. However, y'all must have forgot. Check this out. Bitcoin is still up 114% of the past 12 months, so don't get it twisted and just hodl. Numbers don't lie. So you may be, oh my God, Bitcoin, oh, oh, oh. We're up 114%. You know what I mean? That's a fact. Now, uh, quoting... Uh, Bitfinex analyst. This is not an arbitrary number, but based on the fact that the cycle peak in terms of percentage return reduces by around 67% e-cycle. And the average bull market correction has reduced as well. And adding to investor concerns about more incoming selling pressure, Galaxy Digital also deposited roughly 78.5 million with the Bitcoin on Coinbase Prime. September 7th, noted uh, lock on chain as outlined right here. Now, uh, a potential interest rate cut in uh, the largest economy, the US could bolster investor sentiment for the risk on assets like the Biddy. However, Bitcoin price will likely see more downside pressure leading up to the September 18th interest rate decision. It's like a week and a half out. According to Alvin, Simon, and Theodore, I'm joking, not the chip Monks. But anyways, Alvin Kahn, Chief Operating Officer of the Big Guy Wallet, shared the following. We expect Bitcoin and the equity markets to face downward pressure leading up to the Fed's official rate cut announcement. Once the rate cut is confirmed after the September FOMC meeting, we may see a short to midterm boost on risk assets. And he also added, given the current market volatility, there's a possibility of Bitcoin experiencing liquidity issues which could cause sharp temporary price drops. And at the moment, there's about a 40% chance of the bitty dipping below 50 Gs, uh, baby. So there you go. And in other news, as I pointed out, Bitcoin's up 114% in the past 12 months. Don't get it twisted. And uh, as uh, one of the richest men in the world, Michael Dell, the 13th richest man, worth only $96 billion, he says, enjoy Bitcoin. All these cryptic tweets, I have to believe he is a Bitcoin holder. Maybe his company is not holding it, but I like to believe with all the Bitcoin quotes and Michael Saylor retweets and you know, cookie monster eating bitcoins. I like to assume this guy's a bitcoiner. I mean, billionaires don't play. They're not going to talk about something and then say enjoy bitcoin with an orange heart unless they freaking love it and more than likely own it. That's my speculation. Let me know your thoughts. And in other news, this is big. Well, actually, let me show you the distribution of the 21 million Bitcoin, and then I'll show you this breaking news. So you can see 17% of the Bitcoin supply is lost and gone forever. That's huge. Look at that piece of the pie. 3.4% uh, belongs to the miners. Only 5% Satoshi wallet. 6% yet to be mine. I think, was it 2140, the final Bitcoin will be mine. 2.7% is owned by the government, mostly US. And Bitcoin ETF has just under 4%. And corporations only have 3.6%. That means individuals that self-custody, potentially, like you and I, have 57% of the biddies. Pretty lit. And uh, here's the big news. We got the green light. We're launching a new El Salvador TV channel on Rumble, uncensorable, the only uncensored state media in the world, the world. And uh, even the Rumble CEO responded, this is huge. President Bukele of El Salvador is changing the game and leading on free speech, rocket ship to the moon. So yeah, uh, you should be able to see on your screen, uh, this is live and in the flesh. I'm not a chartist but I have some cool software that does it all for me and I just read you what I see. Fair enough?
Okay, so here we go. Bitcoin's trading at $54,300 is the one hour chart, live and in the flesh. You can see we started building after tapping a bottom yesterday of 52,620. So it's looking all right. You know, we were climbing, we had some corrective reds on the hourly, but, and then we had some greens. So again, expect extreme volatility is to be expected. And yes, we can drop below 50,000 still this weekend. So that needs to be on your radar of things that can potentially happen. In fact, I think a couple of weeks back, we tapped 49, which is a new local low, and uh, we may retest that. So we'll see how it plays out. Here's the four hour chart family. We had that massive red candle yesterday. You can see on your screen that took us all the way down to the 52 level. And then we've just been climbing and then stagnating currently sideways and uh we'll zoom out from here and we'll scope out the one day chart the one day obviously two big red candles and it looks like we may have that corrective green today in the positive but it could also continue to flip negative it's still you know who knows? It's unpredictable, honestly, short-term price action. But here you can see there is a target sitting at 47.7. So that could be the most likely target if we break under 50, in my opinion, based on what I see here. And zoom in out a little further, we'll check out the most bullish chart, which shows you the weekly cup and handle, always sitting just shy of 125,000, as you can see on your screen. And then we'll zoom out, take a quick look or glance at the monthly chart. And according to the monthly, and so far so red, September is historically red. Unfortunately, August, June, and July were ultimately red. We didn't do much. But I think fourth quarter, I'm sticking to my bullish sentiment that we likely break out, hit a new cycle high, re-enter price discovery. But I do think the cycle peak as a whole for the cycle will most likely be in 2025. Here's the latest from Samson Mao excuse me, of Jan 3, headline reads, Bitcoin bears base 40,000 prediction on the self-induced fear. That's right. Bitcoin traders predicting the asset price return to the 40,000 level might be driven more by fear than by the technical fundamentals, according to Samson Mao, CEO of the Bitcoin tech firm, Jan 3. Uh, bears are saying Bitcoin will drop to 0 0.04 million, have no basis for that prediction other than the self-induced fear. Mao says Bitcoin can just as easily reach 100,000. So there you go. As easy as the as easily we can tap 40. He's saying we could use just as easy tap on it. So despite Bitcoin trading below 60, you know what I mean? Uh, past seven days, Mao believes Bitcoin could easily hit six figures, citing macroeconomic factors like significant amount of the interest of the United States government paying uh, its debts uh, for daily and growing the number of businesses holding the asset. Uh, he also stated Bitcoin could just easily get to uh, 100,000, which is 0.1 million, and that it's supported by the brr, which is the money printer, plus 3 billion in debt per day, strategic Bitcoin reserves, pensions, allocating, and uh, uh, corporations are buying. Macroeconomic resource, the BC letter, added that the 3 billion daily interest expense for the U.S. government on its debt is triple the amount paid 10 years ago and has doubled in just the past uh, two and a half years. That's pretty alarming. Debt crisis is an understatement. Preach. Now, fundamentals went out over every time, according to Mao, who said the fear-driven markets are only a short-term issue, and the fundamentals eventually prevail. Keep hope alive. Can fear move the market? Sure. But it never lasts long because the fundamentals went up over time. Even the unwinding of some of the greatest frauds, like FTX, can't keep the price down. And speaking of fraud, take it away, Max Kaiser. Wall Street is fraud, America is fraud, the world is fraud, banks are fraud, central banks are fraud. We live in an era of fraud. It's all based on fraud, and they get a percentage of the fraud. That's the business model. Our next story of the day. Let's discuss the latest with Elon Doge. Elon's Doge government meme sends political speculation a soaring. That's right. Elon may be floating the idea of establishing himself as the head of a new government institution if the former United States Pres Trump claims the Oval Office again in November 2024 election. Again, no, I think it's November 5th, right? Let me know who you think is going to win. Now, true to form, must tease the idea in a meme on X uh, featuring a double and and uh, tendra and tundra referencing both crypto and politics. Look at that. He actually posted this. Department of Government Efficiency. Doge. So there you go. The post features what appears to be an AI image. No, that's you, t you mean to tell me that's not really him? Get out of here. But anyways. <laughs> Seated behind a desktop place card with the letters Doge printed on it. The image was accompanied by text reading Department of Government Efficiency. So this guy is full of jokes. He's always indirectly promoting Doge, if you haven't noticed it. <laughs> Dogecoin reached a 24-hour high in the hours after the must post. I'm not surprised, though at this time, uh, it still remains below the previous week highs of the past seven days. Let's discuss his political ambition. Uh, as recently reported, Trump recently vowed to create a government efficiency commission, and per the former commander-in-chief, the commission would be tasked with conducting a complete financial 
performance audit of the entire federal government, making recommendations for drastic reforms. Musk retweeted a video of Trump's remarks with his own commentary, stating this is badly needed. The billionaire tech mogul appeared to commit to contributing to the political committee, though stopped short of stating he'd accept an official government position. As he shares here, I look forward to saving America. <laughs> That's funny. If the opportunity arises, no pay, no title, no recognition is needed. All I got to say is this. No false idols going to save America. It's up to us, family, by putting all our faith into anybody. I don't give a sh if it's Trump or Elon. If you think one person is going to save us all, we're doomed. We need to understand it's up to us to save us and that the government works for us. Do you guys understand that? Let me know if you agree or disagree. But anyways, uh, next story of the day. Here's the latest what's popping in El Salvador, thy savior. Uh, and then we'll discuss some bullish targets. And then we'll do our live Q&A. Welcome, everyone. Just join the stream. Welcome. Uh, headline reads, El Salvador marks three years of Bitcoin adoption with 31 million in profit. El Salvador is celebrating its Bitcoin anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> marking three years since the country adopted Bitcoin as legal tender. So shout out El Salvador. Uh, they became the world's first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender three years ago, September 7th, 2021. Nice. To promote financial inclusion, facilitate more efficient remittance payments, and attract financial innovation. Bukele, the philosopher king's decision to adopt Bitcoin made the country a historical digital asset pioneer. According to Alex Momot, founder and CEO of the peanut trade, <laughs> Headline here, sorry, quoting him here, El Salvador's experiment with Bitcoin can be seen as a success. The country acted as a pioneer. So true. Uh, taking risk and trying something radically new. That's why you got to respect it. While it is too early to declare whether all aspects of the reform were successful, to me it was, it's clear that El Salvador has reaped some benefits. Clearly, they got a... Uh, how much Bitcoin did we just say? 31 milli worth of profit. Not too shabby. Now, El Salvador has been dollar cost averaging into the bitty since 2021, buying one Bitcoin daily as a part of its adoption plans. Let's go. The country's wallet currently sitting on over 31 million worth of profit, according to Bukele's portfolio tracker website. Shout out to the philosopher king. El Salvador bought its Bitcoin holdings at an average price of $43,877 per BTC. And we got Bitcoin currently trading at 54300 And according to Momot, the El Salvador 31 million Bitcoin profit makes the decision a net positive in economic terms, despite the initial criticism. Uh, quoting the CEO here, the financial gain further strengthens Bukele's position as the initiative now appears to be yielding tangible benefits, adding another layer of validation to this bold crypto experiment. El Salvador currently holds a total of 5,865 Bitcoin worth over 318 million, according to the country's treasury website. President Bukele's decision received widespread criticism after Bitcoin fell from his previous all-time high of 69 Gs, November 2021, after the collapse of the FTX exchange. El Salvador's Bitcoin holdings fell deeply in the red after Bitcoin fell as low as 16,000. But did that shake them out? Oh, hell no. Nah. No Portnoy hands with Bukele family. <laughs> Since Bitcoin's economic model benefits the early adopters, shut out my diamond hands and laser eyes. Crypto investors anticipated a wave of countries following El Salvador's bold decision to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender. However, only one additional country has since adopted Bitcoin as legal tender, while major economies remain hesitant. In April of 2022, the Central African Republic became the second country to adopt a bitty as a legal tender and legalize the use of crypto to bolster the economy and financial inclusion. Larger economies will likely stray away from the bitty adoption due to their dependence on relations with international national creditors. He explained, quoting him here, the bigger the country, the less likely it is to take such risks. This is because the larger economies often depend on relationships with international creditors who are strongly opposed to such moves and maybe also forces of evil opposed to such moves, but just saying. Uh, even El Salvador was uh, pressured by the International Monetary Fund. That's why in my El Salvador verse, one of my verses, every single bar starts with F the IMF. <laughs> Why do you think those bars are in there, family? Anyways, uh, fun to reverse is 2021 decision, according to Harshit Gangwar. What a name. The head of the marketing and investor relations at Transact, he shared, in hindsight, El Salvador was a trailblazer for normalizing Bitcoin as both an everyday currency and as a national investment. And the subsequent institutional adoption in the other global regions have vindicated that decision. If El Salvador had left it until today to make the Bitcoin legal tender, it's fair to say there would be much less pullback less reward as well, yeah? Uh, Brazilian lawmakers have expressed interest in establishing a legal framework for the Bitcoin adoption, but concrete regulations have yet to be developed. 
So there you go, yo. Let me know your thoughts. Um, next story of the day, let's discuss a rally, according to analysts. Then we'll discuss our bullish price prediction of the day, which is 315000 I'm also going to be sharing the timelines. Welcome, everyone, to the stream. Then we'll tap into our live Q&A and premiere a brand new music video produced by Chandy, which is fantastic. Can't wait to share it. It's called Bitcoin Forever, like Peter Pan. But anyways, next article. Bitcoin surge is close. Crypto analyst Mikhail Van de Pop says Bitcoin prime for a massive rally, and here's why. So yeah, uh, crypto trader Mikhail Van de Pop tells his 724,000 followers on X that Bitcoin could soon soar if the Fed starts its rate cutting process later this month. The analyst suggests the rate cutting would inject more liquidity into the market, which could give risk assets like Bitcoin a boost. He also believes investors will pour into Bitcoin as a safe haven against U.S. economic uncertainty and current debasement. Quoting him here, Bitcoin is going to surge significantly from the rate cut policy and the likelihood of quantitative easing. The worst the economic data, the heavier the impact will be on Bitcoin's interest, as Bitcoin is going to serve as the safe haven that gold was in the 1930s, not as a hedge against inflation, but as a hedge against the uncertainty of a failure of the United States. Exactly. It's a hedge against everything. The analyst predicts that the next crypto market breakout will not be dominated by the memes. Quoting them here, I suspect we're on the edge of a potential massive breakout of the markets after either the unemployment data or the rate cuts from the Fed later this month. Again, I think it's the 18th. I also believe that we are going to see an all-around crypto cycle where real-world assets, the centralized physical infrastructure network, and decentralized finance are going to be the backbones of the actual adoption cycle, not the meme coins. The analyst also believes that the Biddy will be top-performing asset moving forward in the economic cycle until reaching its market cycle peak. He predicts Bitcoin will form a blow off top with a technical analysis uh, chart showing a sudden rise of the price followed by a sharp decline, quoting the analyst here. Unemployment data is still coming up and non-farm employment changes as well, but the signs are getting worse. The U.S. dollar is losing momentum against the other currencies as the Canadian dollar is showing a lot of strength alongside the Japanese yen and the euro. This is exactly why Bitcoin is so important to have in your portfolio. It follows the pattern of gold of the 1930s and will likely be the blow off top of this cycle. I think that the next peak of Bitcoin is going to be the peak of the entire equity markets. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the analysts. Now for our feature story of the day, fam. Bitcoin price. Top trader weighs in on 315000 as a potential cycle peak for this particular cycle. So let's break this baby down. Here we go. Bitty, bitty, boom, shakalaka. Okay, so here we go. Uh, many pundits are currently afraid to make large Bitcoin price predictions due to the rapid sentiment change. However, value investor Mike Alfred believes that the crypto could potentially reach 200000 per coin in 2025, despite the recent bearish headwinds. And during a recent conversation with prominent crypto trader Scott Melker from the Wolf of Wall Streets, he revealed his higher-end target is 315000 And before I quote exactly what he said, I'm going to share JV's personal prediction, which I virtually share every day. Um, I personally feel for this cycle peak as a cycle low bear scenario, 222, 222,000. Uh, bull scenario, I think we have the potential to do 750,000. I think it's most likely to be somewhere in between there. There's just so many factors. I can't pinpoint it anymore. And that's just my speculation and prediction. There's no guarantee there, obviously. It's just my opinion. I'd love to know your predictions as well, family. Let me know in the chat. And when I'm done reading to you the story and prediction, I will read them out loud. So quoting him here, my low end target for Bitcoin next year is kind of 100,000. So he has 100,000 six figure target as his bottom bear scenario. And he says 220,000, but his high end target is upwards of 315,000. So that's the high. And of course, they are really smart people who think it can go higher. And I agree. Samson Mao's calling for a million dollar Bitcoin price. Other analysts calling for half a million. Yeah, you know I mean, anything's possible. And the reality fam, Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom. So you got to be open to all possibilities. But it's fun to speculate. Do you agree? Uh, quoting him again. I think the point is that the high level, though, is that the people who are saying that the cycle is over, right? That like Bitcoin is not going to have a cycle at all. Like those people are the ones that are most likely to be wrong. Exactly. Those who say Bitcoin already hit the cycle peak. Last cycle was 69. This time we hit 73. It's over, guys. I disagree with that sentiment. Let me know your thoughts. Earlier today, we saw, you know, Bitcoin past couple of days uh, drop back down from 56 and tap 52. We're right back above 54 at the time of the recording. And Alfred also predicted the U.S. Federal Reserve could surge by as many as 50 basis points. Quoting them here, they're trying to thread the needle to prevent the unemployment from going up without causing inflation to go up. 
Good luck with that one. Oh, we got the inflation under control, uh, 2%. Yeah, whatever you say, Suits. I think they're just going to pump the small cap stocks, biotech, Bitcoin, and maybe some of the crypto. The longer this goes and the more frustrated the people get and the more people capitulate, the bigger the up move will eventually be. 100%. And also we have Tom Lee who predicts, you know, Bitcoin hitting 150,000 or for this cycle as well from Fundstrat. I think I've heard him say up to 250,000. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I mean, every analyst is going to have a different target at the end of the day. So I want to know your personal thoughts, uh, where you think the price will likely go for the cycle peak. And I'll read your comments out loud. Welcome to the Q&A segment of the live stream family. Data says, if I was an influencer, I wouldn't be afraid to make large or unpopular predictions. It's called math. And at a certain point, and although the thing is variable, the math is not. Well, here's the thing. If you make predictions without a timestamp, you're guaranteed to virtually hit the target as long as it's reasonable in some way, shape or form. Like, hey, $1 million, it's destiny. There will be a time Bitcoin hits a million dollars. We don't know when, you know what I mean? So all the predictions will eventually come to fruition unless they're like 10, 100, 10, 100 billion, just make up a number or some shit, but you get my point. Uh, your pronouns are ha ha ha, ha 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 ha. Check out the bazaar style that I display, God. 278 to 375 and I'm selling areas? Selling areas, what do you mean? Oh, selling areas. You mean for the cycle peak? I'll be happy with a hundred, but I am with you on your prediction. Two twenty-five, seven fifty. Send it. Two hundred and forty. Our H prediction. Right on. That was the last epoch, JV. We hit that all-time high. Last epoch. We haven't hit the all-time high this epoch. Agreed. Absolutely. I don't even think we've started yet. Hod man bubs. What does that mean? Hod man bubs. Boobs. Man boobs. I would be happy with 80,000 and 100,000. Right on. Last cycle was heavily manipulated. I hope for a pure cycle, 2024, 2025. But I'm not anymore sure. Now we have institutions. Uh, well, some people like Schiff claim zero. He's an idiot. But you make a good point. Some time range makes more sense before 2030 is my million time in the line in the sand. Right on. I feel it's inevitable by then as well. I think most likely 2029, if I was a betting man, year after the next halving, next halving schedule will take place April 2028. Price discoveries are coming, dollar liquidity is a start, and love you, brother. Uh, shout out Dental Town. Greatly appreciate your support, brother. I do think the cycle peak is in. Wow, Mexico. There is way too much happening in Bitcoin, BlackRock, Fidelity, lots of bullish happening, and the price is not moving. A few years ago, small. Keep in mind, every single cycle post halving, we usually have an 18 month run up. We haven't even entered historically the most bullish year. We're still in 2024. So that's my logic. Uh, the Oracle says 500 to 750,000 cycle peak 2025. I'm with the Oracle. Pex, you want to see my Pex dance? I don't know what Pex we're referring to, but my, my Pex can dance. If you want to see it, let me know. JD, are you joining the trip in December to Antarctica to prove the flat earth? I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone. No desire. And no, I don't think I'm going to Antarctica. I'll probably freeze to death if I don't get shot down. Just saying. Uh, the cycle is less prediction friendly than we may have expected. Perhaps we'll get one half million this time. I'm a unicorn with a rainbow wing, Chandy. Tomorrow I'll be the man again. My pronouns are still up. DXY is going down like a rock, a pet rock. Bullish for Bitcoin when that happens. The last four months could be based for a wild ride. See this. As when somebody asked me what my pronouns are, I just say, ha, 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 ha. It's funny, bro. Um, welcome, everyone. We got roughly a 1,000 people on stream right now. But what I'm going to do, we're going to end the YouTube stream so we can go pure uncensored. Uh, we do the uncensored version of the pod. If you're new here on X and Rumble, we keep the stream going. We only end the stream on YouTube because YouTube is very censorship heavy. And uh, I like to speak uncensored. Go figure. And uh, <laughs> I think you guys enjoy that. And so we're going to continue with the uncensored version of the podcast. We're going to premiere a brand new music video called Bitcoin Forever, like Peter Pan. And uh, looking forward to sharing it. So head on over to the Rumble right now if you're on YouTube. Again, it's rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. Again, rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. And let's get ready to rumble.